University of Arkansas's instructional video for a bacteriological sampling kit that we'll send out to growers or anyone who requests it so they can test the water lines in their poultry houses. What you'll get from us is a kit that contains a small cooler. It'll have instructional sheets in it telling you how to do drip sampling, bacterial sampling, um, shipping information, and sample submissions so that we know what you want tested. It's going to have an ice pack in it. When you get it, put the ice pack in a freezer so that when you're ready to ship the sample back to us, your ice pack is ready as well. It's going to have eight whole pack bags so that you can take drip samples out of the water lines themselves or you can take samples from your source, such as your well or the taps at the end of the houses. It is also going to contain a Ziploc. It has a Sharpie in it to mark your samples. It has a set of long tweezers so that we'll be able to do our swab sampling inside the water line. And it has several alcohol swabs. And these are what you're going to use to sterilize the tweezers. So we'll just start with that now. Be sure that you sterilize the tweezers inside and out. Keep those air dry. And we will start with the drip sink. You have in your kit several of these four pack bags. I would suggest marking on them before you get water, drip anywhere, with whatever sample number will help you identify the location that you have taken this sample. Something similar to that, so that when you get the results back, this is what's gonna be on your paper. And that way you'll be able to identify you want to go ahead and take off the top of your four pack bag. They're sterile. What you'll need to do is trigger the drinker. Just push up on it so that it runs for 15 to 30 seconds. That way you've got water movement from whatever may have settled in the bottom of the drinker. Make sure your bag doesn't touch anything else. If you want mineral testing done, you'll need to collect all the way up into the white line. Normally we don't do mineral testing on a water line itself. Your mineral testing is usually going to come from your well, your source, your tap water. But if for some reason you are testing what's in the lines, be sure that we get enough um, so the minerals, minerals labs can run their test. Once you've taken your drip sample for the water line, roll it down. Roll it down really well, close it up, and we'd like for you to close it a second time on the edges just to make sure your sample doesn't leak out. You hate for your work to be wasted just because it leaked in the cooler and shipping. To the end of the water line, we're going to try to take our swab sample. And the reason we do a swab is to get the biofilm that is actually attached itself to the inside of your water line. You may not be able to pick that up in a drip sample, but it does chunk loose and um, it does contaminate your water line at different points of the day, night, and it gets caught in your regulators, clogs up things like standpipes and valves, lets you know what kind of job you're doing on your sanitation procedures between your flocks. The instinct is to take this hose off. Easy access and easy to get back on. But you'll be doing yourself an, an injustice if you take the swab sample here inside this valve 
because this is built up over time. It has not had the free flowing water that will come if you use um, up near the standpipe. So what we need to do is to take off this valve and try to get as close to the standpipe inside the pipe as possible. You'll need to use your alcohol swabs again. Sterilize the tweezers inside and out. Go up pretty far because you're going to be sticking these tweezers down into the pipe. alcohol swabs and these are what you're going to use to sterilize inside and out. Keep those air dry. Take one of the vials in the sampling kit and again mark it so that you will be able to identify the spot that you got your samples from. Now we're going to open our vial up. Don't touch the lid or the inside of the vial to anything because these are sterile. Put your tweezers down in. Let them kind of grab the sponge, pull it out, and you want to push against the side of the vial so that you're getting out the excess moisture that's in this vial. What we have in the vial is a Butterfield's phosphate dilutant, and it's just to keep your sample at a pH of 7, stabilizes it while it ships to us. Be careful not to spill what's in the vial while you're taking your sample, because in order for us to retrieve the bacteria, We've got to have this fluid in the vial. All you're going to do, push it into the pipe. Try not to touch any of the outside edges of the pipe. And try to get a 360 degree turn on the swab while it's in the pipe. So that you're getting the complete coverage of that biofilm. Bring your sponge out, drop it back in your vial, put your lid back on. Make sure your lid is put on really tight. They will leak during transport and hate for that to happen to you after you've done this work. Then it's going to go in your shipping kit. When you've taken your samples and you're ready to ship to us, we've got the sample ship submission form and you'll have shipping instructions inside your cooler. Take your ice pack that now is going to be frozen, put it in, add your samples, let us know what you want tested, close it up, and if you can't, it needs to come to us overnight. If you can't ship it to us overnight, it can go in a refrigerator for 24 hours and then ship to us, but the ideal situation is that we get the sample within 48 hours of taking it. Be sure that the entire time that the sample and the sample travels or is waiting that it's refrigerated so that you don't have bacteria grow and it causes you unfair results.